I think I've known him almost the longest uh, as far as personal friends, and uh, it, it really it, it's, it's a bad feeling. He's through here, and uh, I, I agree with management in that. I, I just think that uh, if John is fortunate to, to, to beat the odds and be able to come back and do it uh, uh, with, with another ball club, at least he's going to have a, a, a different platform, a different stage to play on. and, and uh, You went to treatment December. 1984, after the Rockets suspended you, and you said it didn't work for you at that point. Why, did, why didn't it work for you yet? Why didn't it work for in me December yet? December 84. Well, I knew I had had a drug problem in 1980 when I went to Washington, but I hadn't accepted that I had a problem. I needed to hit rock bottom and get beat up some more. So Tuesday night, March 11th, 1986, the Rockets are hosting the Celtics, and you play a great game, 20 points, Nine assists, but you guys lose. We weren't in it then. We were just down the floor, but we had, you know, we would take an outside shot, and we just still weren't in the game like we could have been. What happened? I came home, locked the door. She left the key in the door. I took the key out the door, and then it was basically locking me in the house, so I wouldn't go out to try to help protect me. And I snuck out, out all night, went into now what I realized was a blackout. You ran out in a suit, she, socks, she, I, I, no This shoes. came from the game. I always wore a suit to the game. Came from the suit, I was switching into my warm-up, and I go, oh, she left the keys in the door. And I was out of there. And what, what did you do? Where did you go? She tried, to, she tried to catch up with me, backing out the garage. I mean, out the driveway and couldn't. And then I just went on. And... I went on what would be my final drug journey. Do you remember anything about that night? Yeah, wanted to get caught. Really? Yeah, I'd had enough. It was the first time that I had felt like, you know what, I don't care what happens, I've had enough. A big point of clarity to me. I could never get high enough to be high and I could never get low enough to be low. I just felt, you know, I'm finally gonna get some relief mentally of this pain. Did you think you were gonna die? No, I just felt something was gonna happen. Just drove around looking for the, the looking dealer? Looking for nobody. <laughs> drove around, I was a, a unsolicited police patrolling the city. And you couldn't find your car, I read. Yeah. Downtown Woke Houston, Texas. Downtown Houston, couldn't find my car. You remember suit. where you were, like the exact I, intersection? No, I don't remember that. I, down there, you know, I, where was I? Main Street. I don't remember that. I remember waking up looking for a car that I left somewhere else. And I was in a blackout. I remember coming out of that, and then now I knew where I was. And I went to practice. I said, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. I know Bill's going to be all of it. And he told me, so he made me take a test. And he watched you this time, right? You, you, yeah. You wrote that you had beaten tests yeah. using other people's urine. Yeah. No, I, I just, yeah, beating other people's urine. And he watched me take my test. And then they played Portland. He wouldn't let me dress. And when I didn't dress, he had told me the next morning, he called to tell me that my test was positive and they were kicking me off the team. I'm getting ready for the game and come to play in front of that he can't play and I don't know really what's going on. I'm still kind of shaking up about it because I don't know what's really been happening. I know that he's not with the team anymore. Whether the team can rebound from the loss of their spiritual leader is a big if. An even bigger if is whether John Lucas can win his fight with drugs. And when he didn't let you dress that night, what do you remember feeling? Relief. Really? Yeah. No what? pain. No. I, I knew I had had enough. And I, I think now that, you know, in my 27 years of being sober, I know what it was, it was my moment of clarity. It was my moment of like, I didn't care if I never played again. I just didn't want that misery and that pain and that emptiness anymore. I wanted no more of that. And then you went back to Van Nuys and it was different this time. Yeah. How? Well, hey, one, I wanted to stay. I was scared to come back, went back. I, um, I let Debbie and the kids come out there, go through family group. I let my father come out. 
um, and my mother, we went through family. And I had to, I'll never forget telling my dad he couldn't be God in my life anymore because he was my hero. I just said, he, I, and I was always trying to measure up to him because even now he's got a school named after him. You know, he's done a lot in education, integration, a lot in North Carolina. So um, I wanted to follow those footsteps. So I, I used to work on my basketball game like he worked at his job all the time. And they made me tell him that he couldn't be God in my life. And that was one of the most painful things I'd ever had to tell my dad, because he was like God to me. What did he say? I was God to him. And when I told him that, then that was like a big burden off of me. And then my mother, telling her because she used to pray for me all the time and she would always say just pray and so when I came back from treatment the Rockets in the finals you know Ra uh, Raph hits this unbelievable shot they go to the finals Ray at midcourt will throw it inbounds it's either that or it's overtime McCray has it on the Here far goes side Samson underneath. Samson going underneath it goes to Samson he puts yes! it in. oh yeah then they end up losing to the Celtics. So I'm in town watching them go through all of that and go through the excitement of going to the first finals. Really tough, really tough. But the AA community really embraced me. And I owe them so much. I owe them my life for that because that was really a tough time for me. And people wanted Coach Fitch to take you back. Hey, we're in the finals. John can put us over the top. What do you think would have happened if, if you had started coach playing Fitch that quickly? Saved, coach Fitch saved my life. How? Well, he was the first coach that said no. He's the first coach that didn't put up with the bull for me. I used to have to sit around. next to him uh, on all the plank trips. Uh, the and he made me coaches. learn all 12 Federal Reserves of where a dollar comes from. He made me at the end of games on the road trips come to his room and study film till about 5 o'clock in the morning. And then he would say, I think it's safe for you to go to bed. To keep now, an eye on you. Yeah. I didn't know that kind of love from a coach. But Bill said no. Nobody ever told me no. And I see that with so many young kids today. And a lot of reasons I don't have a lot of kids that stay with me because I'm going to tell them no. And the honesty and the truth. But I'm also going to love you. I'm going to try to give you a chance. And I got a lot of that from Coach. Coach Fitch. That balance of love and discipline. Yeah. And when you played, did you ever play high? No. But the effects of being high were there. What did that make you like as a player compared to when you were, had been sober? I wasn't irritable, I wasn't tired, I was in shape, I didn't need as much rest. Three-pointer by Lucas. Lucas turns, jacks it up at the buzzer, good, he hits it, and it's a three-pointer to vote. One of the reasons cocaine was a factor for me, it was only in my system 72 hours, so it was no other side effects. I didn't drink, didn't smoke, just cocaine. And cocaine kicked my butt thoroughly. But Bill saved my life on that. I'll never forget Coach Nelson saying to me, he said, you know what? You can't hide forever. And what are you afraid of? 